my yes um could you hear me yes oh yeah hear. thank you thank you oh uh, thank you for inviting me so good afternoon so it's a great pleasure to have an opportunity to, to talk to you today so my title uh the yeah ha -byung -ju, professor ha -byung -ju introduced my title so in this paper, I argue that the swastika was originally a symbol of the air and wind god in Oriental civilization, and that it could have been applied to the ancient Mediterranean regions where cultural exchange and sharing with the Orient were very active. Oh, it does that. Yeah. Yes. This, the paper has three parts, excluding uh, introduction and conclusion. So first, I will talk about the spring god of oriental civilization, the god of wind and air. Then I will go over the affinity of oriental mythology and green mythology. Finally, and most importantly, I will argue that the ancient Mediterranean swastika was a symbol of the air and wind god analyzed the archaeological evidences. I think um, this is the first thought. Uh, from now on, let's read the paper. Introduction. The swastika is widely found from the east to the west, from prehistoric times to the extent that tens of thousands of pieces have been identified. There are many theories about the meaning or origin of the swastika. Let me introduce a few. Uh, first, there is the view that the swastika symbolizes the sun, which is the one of the most influential. Another is that it symbolizes the human being, a view that it would have simplified the human body. The next view is that the animal would have been symbolized in the swastika. In the case of animals, it would be birds, fishes, goats, snakes, or horses. There is also a view considered it as a swirl pattern. In this way, swastika as a meaning or origin varies widely, making it almost impossible to generalize. The meaning would have changed depending on the time and the place, and occasionally, it would have been a simple imitation without special meaning. In other words, attempt to attach or interpret a single meaning to the swastika would be foolish. Nevertheless, this paper attempt to look into the meaning of the swastika found in the ancient Mediterranean region from the perspective of cultural exchange and sharing with Oriental civilization. Specifically, it aimed to reveal that the swastika was ultimately a symbol of the gods of air and wind, sometimes the storm wind that is stormed. As I said, uh, this is the first uh, thought, I think so. So, second chapter, the spring god of oriental civilization, the god of wind and air. Um, the highest god of the Sumerian civilization, known as the first civilization of mankind, was An, the god of the sky, in cuneiform meaning the god. You see here, uh, in cuneiform letter of the, yeah, yes, here you can see uh, in, uh, it varies uh, as time passed. Anyway, this is An. Mm -hmm in cuneiform meaning God. However, Enlil, the son of An, was actually considered the most powerful God. Enlil's An is related to the word An, we saw, and Lil refers to the personification of wind or air. In other words, Enlil was the God of the wind and of the air, as the God of gods was regarded the master of the universe, the creator and destroyer of civilization, the god of prosperity and abundance, and the one 
who governed destiny and comforted kingship. Did everything the god of gods was under, and he was the god of the wind. Interestingly, not only Andre, but also the other most powerful gods, best weapons and symbols were winds and storms. It is the epic Enuma Elushi that shows this clearly. Mardu fought against the chief rival god Tiamat and eventually gained the victory with the help of all kinds of wind, typhoons, swords, bad winds, dust winds, etc. etc. After the victory, with the help of wind, Marduk split the body of the dead Tiamat to form the sky, the earth, and the sun, and the stars, and the moon. In other words, wind and storms were the most powerful elements and weapons that exist even before the creation of the sky, the earth, and the sun. The kind of windstorm uh, god appeared as the spring god in the Hurrian and Hittite civilizations as well. The other civilizations, I mean. For example, the Hittite spring god Teshu was the god of storm and lightning, and his wife, the sun god. According to Hittite myth, Teshu was born in An's genitals. An's son, Kumarabi, beat his father's penis, from which Teshu was born, driving Kumarabi out and becoming God, king of the gods. And other civilizations like Egypt or even Korea, mm. in Korea, Dangun myth, the Hwanung came down to the earth with wind, rain, and cloud. It shows the god of wind has a significant meaning in ancient civilizations. The third chapter. Uh, the affinity of Oriental mythology and Greek mythology. Interestingly, the Greek poet Hesiod reported in his work Theogonia that Cronus, born of the sky god Uranus and the earth goddess Gaia, cut off the genitals of the father Uranus and became king of the god. And Cronus was again removed by his son Zeus. It can be seen that the motive of Hittite god, such as An, Kumarabi, and Teshu, as we saw, were inherited by Greek mythology. The work that be, appeared to be the link between the Hittite and Greek myths is the Phoenician history written by Sanchuniathon from Biblos. According to this, in the beginning of the universe, there were wind, yeah, and air. The first principle of the universe was air with dark cloud and wind, or rather a blast of cloudy wind, air, and a turbid chaos. In short, wind was the cause of the beginning of all the creation of all things. As you mentioned above, the wind or the air were regarded as the spring god or the fundamental principles of the universe in the ancient Oriental and Mediterranean mythology. Indeed, wind must be very important for them. It would be rather strange if people who live close to the sea, where their ships are fragile in a heavy storm, are not afraid of the storms. Also on land, the gods of wind and air were considered to be related to abundance and agriculture. This is because wind and air are essential for crops and can ruin them if it goes wrong. And wind and air were thought to have a close relationship with the sun as well as the moon, since, for instance, the difference between the tides is closely related to the moon and the wind. Therefore, it is reasonable to surmise that the symbol of the wind god has become a symbol of the power of the universe and furthermore an amulet. Then, what shape could be used as a symbol of the god of wind and air? Is it possible that the cuneiform, as we saw here, itself 
uh, which were used to designate the Supreme God, as in the names of An or Ernil, would have been shortened or transformed into swastika if it became like in this way? Or does not the swastika shape resemble the appearance wind blowing from all the directions, from the east to west, south and west, or even a toy wind when played with boy children? 우리 어릴적에 놀던 바람개비 uh, toy wind itself it could be very similar with the swastika. It's a human, it's a, in all and in Korea and every country, the baramgebi wind toy uh, looks like that. Okay. In the next chapter, the last chapter, except conclusion, I will examine the possibility that the swastika symbolize the wind or the air through various image data excavated from the ancient Mediterranean. Um, here you can see very, very interesting part of it. Um, here, uh, this uh, was found from Pitecusa. It's uh, now the Ischia, the Italian peninsula, the, an island. Uh, it is known as uh, the shipwreck crater, the shipwreck crater. It's a part of it. Here you can see the shape is upside down, right? And there are uh, four persons, and this person is very interesting. You can see the big fishes, the human, uh, the people's head is in the mouth of the big fish. And the other human being's uh, uh, head is so much, it's abnormal. So as the uh, Ningne or Shibrek crater, it should be the people drowned and the shipwrecked. And you can see over the swastika here. So I surmise that in this case, the swastika is everywhere. The, uh, it means the heavy storms, the shipwrecked, and the people drowned. Except that, what can um, translation or explanation could be? In my opinion, I think so. And you can find also, uh, it's in Morocco. Here, you see, you can also the fish is here, and here, swastika here, and swastika here, you can find it. So it's a big fish, and the pottery is upside down as well. And here, like Poseidon, the trident, there is. So this is also maybe the same explanation could be done, right? The swastika meant strong, yeah, storm. So shipwrecked or upside down, partly falling in the sea. Uh, this is coming from a Greece, Thrake, the uh, region. So here, this is anchor and this is a lobster. And here, swastika, there are four dolphins swimming. So what does it mean? So maybe the anchor is a safe cell. So uh, maybe please uh, come back home safely in spite of storms or etc. You can find a lot of coins here. It is not the only one. You can find very, very much. And this is bronze tablet from Shikro. Um, it first begin. maybe it could have, this, I'm not very sure, but maybe it is the uh, earliest form of swastika. In the beginning, I thought uh, it could be bird, flying bird, but here the bird is a separate individual, and this is the sun and moon. So fish is also here. So maybe it could be a mountain and mountain trees. So it could be, or blowing from mountainside, blowing wind. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure in the case, but I have a lot of such data that I, I'm showing with the list one. And here, yeah, uh, this is found from Crete. And here you can see the sun and swastika intersected alternatively, right? And uh, this uh, here, but I, as I told you, the wind is a very important and on land. So here the birds and swastika, you can find lots of this kind of uh, patterns all over the world. 
when I was in Cyprus or in Athens or in Ashima Museum, I could find a lot of those patterns. So uh, maybe we could uh, yeah, try to interpret the wind yeah, over the land. And uh, the swastika uh, is something people use soldiers. And as you see, soldiers is on horse-drawn horse chariot here. And horse is a swastika here and there. So uh, maybe, wouldn't it be appropriate to see it as a metaphor for warriors or horses who run as fast as the wind, especially with regards to the horse, it is worth noting that mythical tradition of seeing the horse as the son of the wind. In Iliad or Odyssey, the god of wind, the name was Aeolus, and his father's name was Hippotes. Hippotes means horse trader. In addition, in Greek mythology, the female horse was uh, pregnant, became pregnant by wind. So the horse and uh, the wind, the relationship very, um, and the last uh, I will, yeah, this is the, the time is running out. So this is, it's not Mediterranean, but in Armenian, you can see, and in Mongolian, you can see lots of uh, horse and swastika. Yes, and in Greece, the Corinthian coins, there is a pe Pegasus who flying horse and the overworld's reverse side you can see swastika uh, it has deeply yeah and later the swastika was replaced by the image of athena the goddess in means swastika was kind of divinity right so conclusion and in fact um there are a number of evidences related to this, but the very few are shown today. Conclusion. In this paper, focusing on archaeological evidences, I argue that swastika was originally was a symbol of the air and wind god in Orient civilization, and it could have been applied to the ancient Mediterranean region where cultural exchange sharing with the Orient were active. Looking at the swastika from the point of view, from this point of view, it could represent all the previous views. The wind or air god could be represented as a personification, could come out with various animals on land and sea, could be expressed like a whirlpool, and was closely related to the sun and the moon. So, my argument wasn't it natural time to symbolize the air and the wind god was thought um, that that was thought as the highest deity and the most basic cosmic element and that wasn't it hard to find a more fitting symbol of the wind blowing in all directions or of the air and the wind filling the universe than the swastika pattern above all the swastika shape basically resembles the whirlpool of wind and even the toy wind vent as we saw. So this is very new. So I want to yeah uh, listen to your comments, your questions. Thank you for your attention. Yes, that's it.